Right. So uh, moving on, in the case of Docker, I will also cover that, provided that we have ample time. I believe that uh, I, I am doing good with respect to time. Uh, in the case of Docker, the RIPE NCC does not provide and maintain these Docker images. Uh, they are, these are maintained by you know volunteers like uh, RIPE Atlas ambassadors for that matter. And uh, although uh, they are volunteers, the, the source or what is uh, what is going with going on with regards to the uh, Docker images is something that uh, are available on GitHub, so you can even do that. But having said that, uh, I will probably uh, demonstrate uh, you know the first link, uh, which is by James. Uh, the reason is because that is the one which is being actively maintained, and the other one hasn't been updated for a pretty long time. Open WRT, uh, which is an open source firmware for routers, uh, for that matter. So it looks like there is a, there is support for this uh, coming to the Open WRT uh, platform. Uh, the kind folks from CZ.NIC um, have already have. They are the same folks who also are behind the Omnis uh, Turia, uh, which is the open source uh, router based on Open WRT. So they have submitted a pull request, uh, I think eight or ten days ago, which I have been following. And it looks like uh, support for open WRT um, for installing the software probe is going to come soon. All right. On Docker, on the front uh, of Docker, uh, here is uh, the, the exact um, you know, command uh, to spawn the Docker image, which uh, one of the volunteers, as I mentioned, um, you know, is, is maintaining and managing. And as I mentioned, it's not maintained by the right NCC for that matter. So uh, let's go ahead and, and do that. Let me switch to my Mac OS screen. And let me take the command. So before that, what I do is, uh, as Anurag was mentioning some time back, that one advantage that Docker provides is the fact that you could have persistent uh, storage for that matter. So let me create a, a directory in my local system called as atlas-probe. And inside this directory, what I will do is, I will create two more directories called as etsy uh, as well as status. So these are two directories which I have created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these local directories as storage areas for the Docker container. So instead of having uh, the, the storage inside the container, I want to have the storage inside uh, on my local file system so that even if the Docker container stops working or, I, or let's say, for example, I terminate the container, the storage uh, area remains uh, safe uh, for that matter. So, so the way you do that is by executing this, this command. And uh, that there is a lot of things, uh, intricacies to it. Maybe I'll just point out uh, the, the important ones is the fact that we want to run the container in detached mode, which means that I, we want to run it uh, in the background. We also, uh, I'm pointing out, I'm doing the mapping of the local directory to the probe directory. So this is the directory which is going to be created, which is, the, which is going to be present inside the container, right? So containers, uh, if you have not explored, are similar to virtual machines, but they, are, they, have a, they have a very different architecture in the sense that they are not running a full-blown operating system per se. So uh, they are very lightweight, they are, they are based on images. And if, once you take the images, when you run them, they, they would ideally be called as containers. So uh, this is the command which is going to spawn the container, going to use the image um, from uh, you know, the, one of the volunteers, which is James. And um, here is a mapping. So this is the part which I will, I will point out. Here is a local directory which I've created for etsy. Here is the one inside the Docker container. This is the one on my local directory, and this is the one which is going to be inside the container. So once I do this, what it is going to do is it is going to uh, connect to something called as Docker Hub. Uh, Docker Hub is again like a repository of Docker images. It is going to download the Docker image for the RIPE Atlas uh, project, and it is going to uh, download and start the container. So if you can see this, here is the probe which was, uh, which, or here is the container which has been um, executed. So the probe is running or the container is running. So what I can do now is I can, I can look into my local directory, uh, the directory structure which I created. Uh, so if I, if I go to slash etsy, uh, I'm sorry, I think it is under status. If I'm not mistaken, I am assuming maybe I created, I use the wrong mapping. Let me check. 
Uh, you should uh, probably see it in the ETC. Yeah, but that's uh, that's the strange thing. It did not create under ETC. Uh, maybe maybe the other so there are in fact I ran a container yesterday, so maybe the other one is is probably using it or a different uh, mapping. But I, I I believe you get the point. So what will happen is under ETC directory, it will create uh, the the SSH public and uh, private key pair. So you take the private key or other, I'm sorry, the public key and put it in the registration system with regards to the right NCC. Uh, strangely, the probes uh, haven't been created yet. Hopefully in the next couple of minutes that will happen. So uh, if I go here, this is the page where you put the, you do the same steps. Uh, put your ASM, put your location, put other details as well as the public key, and then uh, you know you submit the application, and the probe would would ideally get created. Let me uh, try to catch up on some time. So, so I put the exact command with respect to uh, running this inside Docker, uh, as well as you know the few elements which you need to change. So, as I mentioned, for registration of probe, you need to copy the public key and put it in the uh, the form which the the RIP Atlas page has for registering the software probe. And the way to find your ASN uh, is basically using one of these links, which is bgpstuff.net or bgp.he.net. Um, to somebody's question, uh, it would be always recommended to use. So, if you look at this specific Docker command, so one uh, element, if you can see here, which I've, I've pointed out in which is in primarily in uppercase. So those are the values that you need to change. So these are the local directories uh, which you need to create. Uh, one is uh, etsy, anywhere in your file system. The other directory is status, again, anywhere in your file system. And these are the directories which are, which are basically being mapped as mount points, right? So the Docker container is going to use these local directories to store data. So uh, when the, the, the container runs, uh, what it will do is it will generate a public and private key pair uh, and, and store it inside Etsy directory. So that's where you would find it. In my case, I believe there was a slight complication because I was already running a Docker container, so it did not do that. Uh, I need to probably look into why, why it did not, did not work. But um, uh, you, you, when you do this, when you run this command on your, provided that you have created this local file system uh, directories on your local file system, uh, the two private uh, or rather the public and private key pair will be stored inside the Etsy directory. And that is the one you can, you can typically use. And, and just to add to that, uh, to that reply from Sopnil. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I think jungle, uh, the person named jungle, uh, his question is, will the key change if he runs the container again and again? So I think it is designed in a way where keys are generated if you, if they are, if they don't exist, but if they already exist at that mount point, it won't generate them again. So once you once you know once you have those available, you know it doesn't matter how many times you restart the container, it will stay the same. And you can also you know as as I already said, you can move that uh, to a different machine as well. That's a that's a great uh, comment. Uh, uh, Tiago has a additional comment. I successfully implemented two probes using unprivileged Debian LXEs on Proxmox using less than sixty four uh, megabytes of RAM and one one point five gigabytes of hard disk space. A viable alternative to VM on this, absolutely. So you could also do it on Alexi, but I I have not uh, explored that part a bit. So maybe I need to uh, you know uh, explore that as well as maybe pick your uh, brain in case uh, we need to look into uh, sharing notes for that matter. So can you show the RAM usage of the Docker container? Uh, yes, I think I can do that. Two, one. I have a separate mapping for uh, showing the RAM usage. Let me I think check. it's probably it's probably the inspect. Yeah, um, I have a different. My only worry is there is a different. Um, um, yeah, hopefully it worked. So I have a, a alias which uh, primarily uh, is mapped differently. I'm using a different shell. I believe it is somewhere here. Okay, it's it's probably showing the configuration rather than the rather than the yeah. statistics. Yeah, it should be stat or something. Yeah. 
Uh, one more thing: uh, these keys are are depend. These keys are dependent on the ISP. Uh, no, these keys are not dependent on the ISP. Uh, it is dependent on the installation that you that you perform. So, unique key pair, uh, public and private key, is generated uh, on your local uh, file system. So, it has nothing to do with your your ISP per se. Uh, any more questions? Feel free and uh, and uh, put it in the in the chat, and we would. We would be happy to address them. I've, I've moved my probes uh, many times, you know, between ISPs. So I'd say typically it takes like four or five minutes. So within four or five minutes, you will see the see the atlas reflecting that it's a different ISP now. Excellent. So uh, if you're able to see my screen, both my software probes have been created. So if you can see, as I mentioned, it roughly takes around 10 to 15 minutes. So if you can, um, if I can visit this pages, uh, let me open in two different tabs. Uh, so I've got two, two separate emails uh, at the same time. And here is the probe which is uh, running. So each has a diff unique probe ID. So this is uh, 100915. And um, as you can see, it is 5020, which is a firmware version. And it also has the ASN as well as a public IP, as well as the private IP address, which I am able to see uh, because it's my probe. Uh, people will not be able to see this PII that is personally identifiable information. Uh, here's the second probe, which is uh, 100914. And if you go to networks tab again, you can see that this is uh, the same ASM because I'm, I'm running it on, on, on the same network. So um, 